Failure, the great motivator. Nothing great in life can be built without it. Throughout the annals of sports history, we are provided countless stories of perseverance. Immortals who have stared down the icy clutches of failure only to stand defiantly resolved to turn those shortcomings into personal triumphs. All of the greats shoulder the brunt of failure, except for one, a chosen one, LeBron James, a guy who not only is the undisputed goat of excuses, but is so utterly legendary. He has an entire delusional fan base parroting these claims on his behalf. But let me say this to all the critics out there. The man is 38. And Stephen A, you alluded to it about him not being 100%. Damn it, he needs surgery. But in the wake of his retirement teasers as of late. Got a lot to think about. Is it possible we have bared witness to the last cast, the last cram, the last excuse? And the excuses started at an early age and stage for LeBron James in his NBA career. As in just his fourth season while in the 2007 NBA Finals, we were presented with one of the most prolific narratives in LeBron's endless bag of excuses. The not enough help defense. As if not enough help would excuse the alleged greatest player of all time from averaging just 22 points per game on 35% shooting in a four game sweep. And somehow this pathetic playoff run is actually more often than not spoken about favorably in terms of LeBron's legacy. As an example of how LeBron single-handedly carried a team all the way to the NBA Finals. But James got all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals that season without even beating a team that had a winning record. As the Wizards and Nets, the Cavs' first and second round opponents, were both just 41 and 41. Once in the Eastern Conference Finals, the 50-win Cleveland Cavaliers got the 53-win Detroit Pistons team that no longer had Ben Wallace, their defensive anchor, nor did they have a single player that averaged over 20 points per game in that season. Man, what a legendary run. But LeBron and his media minions were only warming up with the excuse game as they would take their efforts to new and never before seen levels in the wake of LeBron's baffling collapse in the 2010 playoffs. LeBron stormed into the second round matchup with the fourth seeded Boston Celtics as the Cleveland Cavaliers had the best record in the NBA that season and LeBron was the MVP of the league. And everything was going according to plan for the Cavaliers through the first three games of the series, with Cleveland taking a 2-1 lead against the Celtics. In the first three games, MVP LeBron averaged 32 points per game on 54% shooting and registered a plus-minus of positive 21. But something happened between game three and game four. LeBron's scoring and efficiency took a complete nosedive. As in game four, five, and six, James scored just 21 points per game on 34% shooting from the field while posting a negative 37 plus minus. The Cavaliers went from a 2-1 lead to not winning a single game the rest of the series. On the surface, this would appear to be just one of many high leverage choke jobs in LeBron's career, but a different excuse quickly started making the rounds following LeBron's puzzling collapse before absolutely exploding into a viral story. The implication being that LeBron's mother Gloria James was getting nice with Cleveland teammate Delonte West. Only the all-time excuses goat of goats could come up with this one. LeBron would, of course, take his talents to Miami a few weeks later. Um, and this fall, I'm going to take my talents to South Beach. And would guarantee seven titles for the Heat organization. Not two, not three, not four, not five, not six. 
Kassim. Yeah, that didn't happen. But it wasn't LeBron's fault. For starters, let's go back to the bag for the best excuse in the entire arsenal. He just didn't have enough help. That is despite having two perennial all-stars and future Hall of Famers, Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh in their aged 32 and 29 seasons. Oh, and also it was pretty hot in the Spurs arena. LeBron would get carried off the court with cramps and carried away right out of town, back to Cleveland. James won his one and only ring there while he had the biggest super team on the block. But as soon as someone evened the playing field, LeBron all of a sudden, wait for it, didn't have enough help. Of course, no one in NBA history could possibly have won that series in 2017 against the Durant Curry super team. That is despite Kyrie Irving averaging 29 points per game in the series while outscoring Steph Curry and outshooting him at every level from the field, the three point line, and the free throw line. Oh, and the trio of Irving, Kevin Love, and J.R. Smith outscored and outshot the trio of Curry, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green. But yeah, totally unwinnable series there. The next season would be LeBron's last in Cleveland. And of course, he lost in the finals again. But not only did he have, wait for it, not enough help. LeBron also played the last three games of the series with a broken hand, or so he claims. This is despite not mentioning anything about it the entire series, never appearing on a single injury report, never alluding to any kind of pain or discomfort at any time on the floor during any of games two, three, and four, and being seen dapping up some kids on his way off the court after being eliminated in game four. But less than 30 minutes after these handshakes, with that same hand, LeBron would appear at the podium wearing a cast, where he would let us all know he was in fact playing with a broken hand. Pretty much played the last three games with a broken hand, so. LeBron, of course, not having enough help anymore, as we know, had to jump to yet another team and search for another ideal scenario to try to steal some easy rings to bolster that legacy, which he did with Anthony Davis in the Disney bubble. And things were all coming together this season as well, as the Lakers got all the way back into the Western Conference Finals behind Anthony Davis and significant contributions from a multitude of role players. The Lakers were in one possession games late in the fourth quarter in all four games of the Western Conference Finals with LeBron gagging all over himself in the clutch. For the series, he shot just 7 of 23 in the fourth quarter, but it wasn't LeBron's fault. Immediately following the game, we learned that LeBron was dealing with an injured foot that may or may not require surgery this offseason. And it remains to be seen if LeBron will make good on any of his latest retirement musings. But it is a pretty safe bet that if he returns to an NBA arena near you next year, he will continue to do what he does best and fail. But not to worry, as there are plenty of excuses still waiting in his unlimited bag.